Hello? Okay. All right, so, um, so as soon as Daniel gets the hell out of the way of the projector, we'll go ahead and get started. Okay, um, so we're going to do just a little show and tell type thing here today. Um, just DIY hardware. We're, what we're going to end up doing is uh, we're going to carve some uh, something out into, into some copper boards, and um, and then we're going to. Oh, I got to get in front. Of, I don't like cameras. All right. Um, so we're going to we're going to eventually make a little infrared infrared detector, um, and then we're going to use the, this remote stolen from somebody's room to. Uh, to, to show that it works. So anyway, let, let's go ahead and get started. And uh, if there's any questions at any time, just uh, you know, throw them out. It's real informal and everything. So, all right. And I'm already, and I'm already screwing things up. Okay. So uh, outline. I don't know. I'm not really going to go over it. You can read. We're going to make it. It's going to be cool. Okay. So uh, why do you want to make your own hardware? Because uh, well, it's fun, but more importantly, chicks dig it. And uh, you know, um, and you're, you'll impress your friends, but more important, importantly, chicks dig it. Um, also, you can you can do cool things with it. Um, there's a there's a talk on Xbox hacking by uh, Wolfus, I guess. Who uh, I, I'm sure he'll talk about it. But the original Xbox hacks that they did, the mod chips and stuff, were basically pick chips on little homemade uh, PC boards. And uh, so you know, being able to make your own hardware that you can is compact and you can throw into some other thing to make it do what it's not supposed to is, uh, you know, a good thing. Um, of course, because you can. Um, and lastly, if you really have to ask why, what the hell are you doing here? So, okay. So, uh, wire wrapping sucks. Yeah. Yeah. We we've got something here. It's really simple, but uh, I don't know where. You see, I don't know if you can see this or not, but. Uh, this is lame, and it's hard to do, and if something breaks, it's impossible to figure out. Yeah, okay, this took him an hour. And, uh, you know, if you actually were to make something that was useful as opposed to just something that blinks a light, that would take a long time and be lame. Um, other ways to do it, which are usually a lot of people know how to do this with breadboarding. It's just basically a, a, a big matrix of, of little holes that you stick wires into and you can connect things to. A little bit better, but this still sucks. It's good for prototyping, but if you slip and pull a wire, uh, you're going to be spending a lot of time debugging, and that's lame. So, um, yeah, it, wire wrapping and these other methods, uh, they take a lot of time. They're messy. They're complicated. Uh, you can make a lot of errors, and they're just generally annoying, and chicks don't dig it. So, PCBs are good um, for the exact reasons that the other stuff sucks. Uh, um, also, with with PCBs, you can you can use like CAD design EDA um, software to to make them, and you can get much more complex designs in much smaller areas than you could possibly do with uh, with wire wrapping. Um, also, they're reproducible, so once you have your cool hack, you can actually you know make another one, which is nice. Okay, so um, just we're going to go through the list of things that you would need to to make one of these. Um, First, you'll, you'll need some copper that's uh, copper clad onto, onto fiberglass. This is an example of it. Uh, you can buy it uh, at any number of different places. You can you can get it at uh, Radio Shack as a last option, but uh, there's a lot of online places that sell it. I actually got a lot of it um, from eBay for pretty cheap, so that, that's another good option. Yeah. Um, and it comes in different varieties and different uh, different copper weights. And in this case, it's actually dual-sided, so you could make a two-sided uh, board if you wanted to put like power on one side and actually the signals and circuits on the other side. And that's what a lot of people would do with the, with the two-layer design. So um, the the real hardcore ones that you'll see, like motherboards, they go up to like eight layers, and uh, you can't do that yourself, so don't try. <laughs> um, you also need uh, something to make hot water. It has to be hot, and we're going to put um, some etching into it that's going to eat the copper away. We'll get into it more, but you need to. Uh, you need a heating element and something to heat some water in. Um, you need a, a wire brush, steel wool, something like that. Um, and you'll need a, a drill and a sharpie um, to actually draw your circuit. Um, so, you know, safety glasses are good so that you don't go blind. Um, latex gloves are good and, uh, you know, other stuff. Uh, at the end, I'll talk about a different way of doing it where you actually transfer something that you've printed out. So for that, you'd need a, a laser printer and some 
transfer of paper and in, in an old like iron. So um, the the other thing you, you need, of course, is a, is actually a circuit that you want to create. Um, in this case, we're gonna we're gonna show a, a design for a simple little IR detector uh, that you could use for any kind of remote. And um, I already talked about that, but it's really simple. It only takes a couple parts. Um, a photodiode, a, a transistor, a resistor, and a, you know some sort of power source. So um, we'll show that at the end, um, and you know you can check it out. All right. So um, this is the circuit, and basically how it works. For, I don't know how many of you know much about circuit design or anything like that, but this is really quite simple. You've got a, you've got your your battery right there, and you've got a transistor which essentially works as a switch. This is a, a photodiode, which basically lets current conduct um, whenever whenever it, see, it shines light on it. And um, over here, you've got an LED that'll show you that it's turned on. And uh, this resistor just limits current so that you don't have what looks like a short circuit. Um, so in your in your uh, in your schematic capture utility, you would draw this thing out, and then you could switch to a PCB layout. And this is an example of something that you could actually print out. Um, you would first print out just the the wire here, the blue and the green which would be actually what you would transfer onto the copper, and then you can silk screen over it if you want to be really fancy. But um, it, it's a really simple circuit, and uh, yeah. All right, so um, the first thing, we'll, we'll go ahead and start the demo now. Um, the first thing you gotta do is you gotta clean the, clean the copper board because it oxidizes, and uh, that makes it harder to etch. So um, use your steel wool and uh, make, uh, just clean it off. If you don't do this, this could take a long, long time. Yeah, I'm only going to do one side because we don't need to do two sides for the, for this. And I'm not even going to actually make a circuit here. I'm just going to write uh, Freak Nick. So this, this is uh, just something that I pulled from somewhere. This is the actual artwork from uh, the board that we created that, that I'll eventually show you when as it was etching. It's blue because it, we actually took it while it was etching, and you'll see that the water uh, will, will turn blue as the copper gets uh, dissolved and goes into solution. So um, after you've, uh, after you've uh, cleaned it off, you want to go ahead and, and write, uh, write whatever you want to write in it. So I'm just going to write uh, Freak Nick on it. And, uh, It doesn't really matter. You just need enough. You just need enough so that the reaction. Sorry. Yeah, you you just need enough so that the reaction happens. Um, some places will tell you one to one, but that's really too much. Um, you can just kind of eyeball it. If the if the reaction's not happening very well, you can just dump more in. It doesn't. It doesn't. Uh, you know, this isn't. This is, doesn't need to be an exact science. So, I mean, it's a hacker conference. We just kind of hack things together. You know. Also, if there's something in the bottom that's not dissolved, you probably.
Um, it, it's actually really pretty simple. I mean, you know, if you're doing the Sharpie method, if you're doing the Sharpie method, which is what I'm doing right now, I'm just going to write onto it. Um, it. It's really, it's really pretty straightforward. The, the only thing I guess I could say is that you want to make sure that your ink is really thick and uniform. Um, if you don't, which probably will happen in this case, um, you'll, what will end up happening is it'll be a little bit pitted. Um, so. Um, with the transfer method, it's better. It's better. I mean, Sharpie is is good enough for for you know hacking purposes. But if you're actually going to do something seriously, like you wanted to sell it, or you know you wanted to show it off or something, you you would uh, probably want to do like the transfer method that I'm eventually going to talk about. Um, but it's like I said, yeah, it's really pretty simple. Um, it's really pretty simple to do. It's just you know somebody if somebody shows you how to do it, that's pretty much all you need to do. So. You also might have a problem with over etching. Um, this, or the first example we did, the, uh, man, that was worse than I thought. Yeah, we we had a, a really bad problem on this one, especially with uh, not enough ink and uh, getting some really nasty looking uh, etched copper. On the back, we wrote our names. You can see they're completely gone because uh, we left it in the in the etching too long, so they just kind of disappeared. Um, if you want to etch two sides, you have to set it on something so that it gets it gets even uh, even etching on both sides. Uh, it's it's a little harder than just one sided because you can just dump it in the in the liquid and let it go. But uh, that was kind of difficult. Okay, so I just anything with this or it'll stain concrete it'll stain a, a stainless steel sink it will stain anything so don't use it use this um, but keeping it hot will help and if you really want to get uh, slick with it you'll you can get like a uh, a bubbler, some type of uh, like a fish tank bubbler or something that uh, that will actually, you know, create bubbles around it, which will help uh, speed up the, the reaction. But but heat is is good. So um, well, you don't want it to be boiling, but you want it to be pretty warm. Um, the, the guideline, what was the guideline? 35 C, something like that. Anyway, not not too hot, but again, like I said, just make it up as you go. It'll work fine. This is not a an exact science. So while, while he's uh, dumping more etching into there, we're, we're going to keep going. It it usually takes like a, it can take up to 15 minutes or so for it, for it to happen, and it'll happen pretty slowly. Um, but once it once it starts, it'll you know move along. But uh, we'll, we'll show you how that as it goes. Yeah. Um, the the steaming is is from the water, and it's I. Yeah, it, it's just the water. I wouldn't worry about it. <laughs> okay, so uh, this was uh, this was one that we did before. That's the one that I've already sort of showed you. I don't know; it's too dark in here probably to see, but um, we did it at Hello World in, in paying homage to every programming language ever. Um, and you can see the the two next to each other. So um, once once the etching is done, we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and go go on while that's going, but. Uh, once it's done, you'll take it out, and you need to, to rinse it off um, so that it doesn't, uh, so that the the uh, etching doesn't recrystallize back onto the board. If it does, it's not a big deal. You can you can use a solvent or something, 
probably some of it will crystallize anyway, but um, washing it off is a, is a good thing to uh, try to minimize that. And also, if there's a lot on there, it'll be a lot harder for uh, the solder to stick to it. So you want to make sure to keep it as clean as possible so that soldering is easier. Um, once you're done with that, uh, you know, you can do your drilling and uh, all this stuff. I mean, this is, should be pretty straightforward. Solder your parts on after you drill it, and, uh, you know, project over, you win. So. Um, for printed, okay, so now we're going to talk about the printed transfers. Um, basically with this, it's kind of cool. Um, as it turns out, uh, like, the toner in, in laser printers is, is made out of a lot of plastic. And so what you can do is if you take, like, a photo paper, uh, photo paper seems to be the, the best, or you can buy specialty paper, but, you know, that costs more money. Um, you can print onto it, uh, usually if you run it through uh, the printer two or three times to make sure you get a good thick coat in, on there. Uh, what you do after that is um, you place it face down on, a, on the copper after you've cleaned it and you just iron it on and you melt the plastic right onto the copper and um, then you, after it cools down you can put it in water and try to get the paper off as much as you can, clean it off and it'll leave the plastic behind um, and it'll make nice thin traces and uh, then you, you know, go through the etching steps as uh, however, you, however you normally do it and uh, at the end you, you, can, you can do much finer uh, type work and uh, you know, in a much smaller space that way. So that's a good idea. Okay, so um, just a word about EDA. Uh, EDA stands for uh, Electronic Design Automation. Um, and these are some options that are out there. Um, there's Express PCB and PCB123, which are Windows, and they're free. You can go download them. Um, you can draw your schematics first, and then you can, uh, and then you can uh, switch over and uh, lay out your board and then once you're done with that um, you can actually just click send it'll actually give you a price estimate right on, on in the program and you click send and it'll go to the manufacturer and they'll print them up and send them to you usually when you do that uh, they require you to buy two of them and it usually costs anywhere from seventy to a hundred dollars so you know making them yourself is better and, unless you're doing something that you really need um, you know to try out in a, in a professional sort of way um, there's also an open source project called GEDA um, and, and X Circuit, which are also you know there for layout and stuff like that. And uh, the one that I usually use, the one that the uh, pictures from before were created with, is this program called Eagle. And uh, you can download it. Uh, there's a demo that comes with it for free that that is fully functional, and it works really well. And if you want to get a bigger PCB area, then you need to pay for it or whatever other method you might uh, have to not pay for it. Um, so anyway, uh, like, and then there's the, the big boys tools, there's Protel, there, there's the ORCAD tools, there's a bunch of these ones that are um, really overkill for most things that people are going to be doing, but you know, whatever. Okay, so parts, um, I'm sure you all know about this, but Radio Shack is a last resort. Uh, you've got questions, they can't answer them. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> So DigiKey, Mauser, you know, local electronics supplies, stores, whatever. Um, Radio Shack if you're really in a pinch, but they're, it just, they're not helpful. <laughs> um, so what's that? That's true. They do. Th he says they, they certainly think they are. They'll, uh, they'll try to make something up if they don't know an answer. That, that's definitely true. They will sell you a cell phone. <laughs> they will sell you, or, or a compact computer. Um, so... We're gonna while this thing's still etching. I don't know if you can see from far away, but it's already it's starting to turn turn blue a little bit. The reaction takes some time to, to actually go to completion, so uh, we're gonna we're gonna keep going with that. But um, I'm gonna show you the, this circuit. Let me put the, the the actual schematic back up on the screen here. Um, it, it really depends. Um, in the case in the case of, uh, of this stuff, I, I actually looked up online uh, to see, and, and they said that, it, that this stuff is okay to pour down the sink. Um, I, if you if you can't do that, um, I don't know. Take it maybe take it to to a local uh, high school or university that has a chem lab, and I'm sure that you know they'd be more than happy to get rid of it so that you, you know, don't have to pollute and stuff like that. Yeah.
That, that's a good point. Yeah, that's a, that's a really good point. We actually, usually when I do it, I, I just dump it down the toilet. And I live in an apartment, so. <laughs> yeah, an upstairs apartment at that. That's true. Um, so um, so this is the, actually the circuit that I already talked about. And we've actually uh, created it here. And uh, I don't know if you want to come up and look at it or I can pass it around. But uh, I'm going to actually go ahead and just show you how it works. Um, basically, this, this clear, this clear um, diode right here is, is the photodiode. And so uh, when it gets light, um, it, uh, it will conduct current. So this is actually, you know, if you look at the tips of IR devices, it always has like that clear tip on it. And that's actually, uh, you know, just an LED, basically, the same as this. Um, and then we've got a red LED here um, and a transistor. So, and I, I don't know if you can see the artwork on it. Like I said, I'll uh, either pass around. This is a really, really simple circuit, but I mean, the point was just to show that you can do it and it, it's good. Um, so I'll go ahead and plug it in, and then I'll point uh, I'll point this at it. Now it, it's a little bit hard to see because uh, it doesn't this has a pretty wide spectrum that it that it uh, reacts to. Um, if you were going to do this really nicely, what you would do is uh, you would get like an IR filter that you would put over it so that only it only passes IR through. And, uh, and then it, it would be total, the LED would be totally off until you pointed an IR device at it. And when you press the button, you'll see a flash. Um, the other things is, for, for those who don't know how, how the remotes work, they actually just basically send a square wave, uh, 40 kilohertz, I think it is. And it's got you know, a pattern that the receiver can detect and then you know, do the corresponding action to. So let me go ahead and plug this in, and I'll just show you how it works. This was a lot cheaper than buying one of those uh, uh, phosphorescent infrared detectors from Radio Shack. Those are about $15, and it's a little piece of paper, practically. So, um, so yeah, basically, you know, from from that, you know, obviously you can see that you can get your signal out of it, and then it'd be pretty easy to go from there to plug it into like a parallel port, and uh, you know, then you'd have basically an IR detector that you you know you have to write your own software, but fine. It's not that big of a deal. Um, and so that, that's pretty much it. This thing's still going. Um, is there any more questions about it, or we're just going to let it go? Yeah. I've not tried the real ones before. Um, the like I've used the, the, the other ones, and, and they work fine. It, it depends on how small your traces go down to. Um, if they get really small, it's going to be hard to transfer them properly. Um, even, yeah, well, it, it kind of depends. I mean, it's it's really just, at this point, it becomes more of an art than anything. It's just kind of, you know, you just got to kind of finesse it. Um, and if you if you do get a lot, if you get, you know, a little bit of broken traces here and there, you can always jump her over it, which is, you know, totally valid. It still sucks less than wire wrapping, so, yeah. I guess I haven't really made too many circuits that I care that much about, but um, <laughs> yeah, usually I just you know I'll make something little and, and just to prove that I can and things like that. But um, it, it's really you could you could code it with with something. I'm sure they're you know like at the hardware store. Once it's all laid down and everything, um, you know you're good to go in that sense. Um, yeah, I mean you know you could you could basically just code it with I don't know you could put wax over it even if you wanted to as long as it wasn't something that was going to heat up. I mean, but really, that's not really going to be that much of a problem. I mean, even even if it, the top of it oxidizes, there's still going to be plenty underneath that, you know, assuming you don't have some really, really cheap, really thin copper board, uh, there's still going to be a lot of conducting underneath. So I, I don't think that should be really too big of a problem, especially for the do-it-yourself type stuff. So, um, yeah, is there, is there any other questions? Yeah. What 
Oh, there's, I've done uh, I've done some stuff like for projects here and there. Like I did this um, this one project that I had to do that would basically follow a follow a line. Uh, it was it's called Blinky. I don't know if there's any uh, Vanderbilt students here, um, but uh, basically it follows a line and it records where it goes. Then you can go back and, and uh, play it back, and it will walk back around the line even if the line isn't there. So it uses it uses a little IR detector to see. Um, if it's on the black line or off the black line, and so it'll walk around that circle and, and it'll record it, um, and then and then you know it'll go back. Uh, that that's probably the biggest project. I mean, like I said, most of the little things that I do are just I wonder if this will work, so I'll just you know do it and see what happens. Um, yeah. Other questions? Okay. Uh, well, that that pretty much wraps it up. Um, if you have any other questions, um, I should also plug this. I don't know. There was some somebody here who I saw this on their website, and uh, I apologize for not knowing who you are, but it was definitely one of the one of the Freaknik people. But they they had this idea for hacking a, or taking apart a. What's your name? Was that? Shadow. Okay, so yeah, this was yeah, that's right. So I, I caught it off of Shadow's website, but I ended up making my own because it was a really good idea. You can just take any you know PC power supply and uh, hack it up to you know make it work as a, as a general power supply with a whole lot of current in it and you know so anytime you need like yeah 30 amps at 5 volts I mean, right here yeah so so um, yeah so that, that's that's pretty much that's pretty much it um, if there's no other questions uh, you you know feel free to come up and ask any questions whenever um, I'm only going to probably be here for today though so whatever Anyway, uh, thanks a lot, and uh, yeah.